Everybody, this is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I'm back not with another thrift haul, but with a guess what sold on eBay. Finally, right? I mean, it's been months since I've done one of these. Now I'm broadcasting tonight from the attic, and it's getting hot up here, but no air conditioning until Memorial Day weekend. For those of you who are new to my channel, I used to do this quite a bit. And I would show you all of the things or some of the things that I recently sold in my eBay shop. So I'm going to go back over the last couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, and highlight some of the things that have sold. I'm not going to talk a great deal about them because if you see anything you're interested in and would like to know more about, uh, and you've got nothing else to do tonight, you can go back into the archive and look at some of the old thrift haul videos and you'll get much more detail. Now what I'm going to show you quickly is the final selling price of the items. Yes, I have to pay for the item and I have to pay uh, eBay fees and PayPal fees and my own shipping materials. So you don't actually get to find out how much I put in my pocket at the end of the day. You just quickly get to see what things actually have sold for at eBay auction. Just to kind of keep it quick and simple. Oh, and by the way, the prices that you see do not include shipping. It's the final price of the item. The winner always actually pays the shipping over and above, over and above the price of the item that has sold. So I shall stop rambling on and I'll shrink myself to the corner and we'll get in here and see what sold. From about 1915, this General Electric six blade brass fan sold for, what did it sell for? 191 bucks. And yeah, I shipped it. A student lamp from the late 1880s, a beautiful brass lamp that came out of a local attic. That sold for $82.99. A bunch of fantastic, actually, what, there were six of these, five of these records, 78 RPM phonograph records, all recorded in the 1920s. Now you'll see it says they're soprano in Yiddish. And these uh, were recorded, as I said, in the 1920s. Uh, some of them in Yiddish, some in Hebrew, uh, and these all, this lot sold uh, for $45.50. A lot of you know I've been messing around with 78 records for a very long time. It's kind of one of the things that I like best. This is what's known as a homebrew set, uh, a homebrew radio set. This was manufactured in the early, not manufactured, this was made by an individual in the 1920s who would have gone to a local store in their little town, bought the actual parts, and came home and then built the radio themselves. And this set dates to about 1922 or 23, and it sold for $99.77. Another record, uh, the famous Sing 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 by Benny Goodman and his orchestra. Yes, you all know it, but I can't play it for you because I'll get a copyright infringement. That record sold for 40 bucks. That, that won uh, 78. It's a big 12 inch 78. I'll let you see that. And then let's have a pizza party from the late 50s. A big pizza serving tray sold for $34.99. Two Art Deco blue glass mirrors sold for $59. And these were originally table insets. You may have seen Art Deco furniture. It was popular to do this in the 1940s and late 30s. 
you'd have a coffee table and two end tables, and this blue glass would be uh, inserted into the top of it. The tables were gone, but I was able to find this glass and happy to sell it for $59. These are the slip shades that I picked up not too long ago from the 1920s. The light fixture was long gone, but I rescued the shades and they sold for $154. This little Ansonia clock, non-working, but in a nice piece of Austrian porcelain, sold for $10.28. The Vintage Japan Owl sold for $12. Next up, also a piece of lusterware, or also made in Japan, lusterware from the 1930s that sold for $13.50. And for $13, that's not right. Did that also sell for $13.50? Uh, this unmarked tray, ceramic tray, which, uh, I said hydrangeas, I guess those are hydrangeas. That got, that made it to somebody's home in time for Easter. They sent me a wonderful note that said it was the hit of their Easter centerpiece. That right there. So that made me very, very happy to hear that. And from the 1950s, uh, a Royal Copley chicken bank. Uh, and he says, uh, chicken feed and it's a bank. You can't see from that. Well, I'll show it to you. There's the slot where you put the money in. Is that showing up? There it is. And then down at the bottom it says chicken feed. This went. This also went to a subscriber and whose name I won't mention because I don't have permission, but she knows who she is and thank you for your business. I really do appreciate it. And she also sent me a photograph of that chicken on a shelf with the other chickens in her collection so they're all together doing their chicken thing in a new home. So let me load a few more sales and I'll be right back. Okay, from World War I, we have a photograph, uh, three photographs of the same soldier. There he is in his uniform. And then we see two other images. This sold for about $12, I think. Where is it? $12.50. Uh, and the Frankenstein lamps. I sold them both to the same person, shipped them all the way to California. The person was very happy to get them. They sold for about $54 each, so about a hundred bucks, a little over a hundred bucks for the pair. So we'll just quickly show you this one. And then the second one, I think I've got right here as well. Right, here's the second one. I didn't ask the person if they were going to keep them as is or use them for parts. Not really sure what the winner is going to do. From the 1960s, a wind-up walking duck. I've had this thing forever. Yeah. And he works perfectly. $8. I was kind of surprised. but And even with the original box. But I'm telling you, I have been trying to sell this thing for a year and nobody wanted it. Well, finally, he has a new home. For $42, this, uh, I sold these as a set. Everybody knows what these are. One lid, of uh, the lid on the divided dish, the top dish did not have a lid. Another Pyrex bowl, the dots here, this one sold for $19. The button collection here sold for $19. This was, this was just these buttons on this card. And they sold to, uh, who did these sell to? Uh, someone who wrote to me and was very, very pleased to get them. I, I, I do recall that. It's always nice when people write back and they, they talk about how they're using the items in their collections or what, what the items personally mean to them. I like that. Here are the three slip shades I got uh, about a month ago. The light fixture was long gone, but I salvaged the shades sold them for a hundred and fifty uh, hundred and fifty four dollars okay 
let's keep on going and next we come to of course now I'm gonna give you I'm gonna let you in on something if you're hoarding these wait a minute we got to get serious here where am I okay if you're hoarding those things I think you should sell them they're reproducing them I think they were I even saw them last Christmas at places like uh, Lowe's I think Home Depot Target so cheap reproductions from China are flooding the market and so I think that enough is going to be enough. Everybody who's going to want one is going to have one. I think the prices on them are already coming down. So if you're hoarding those homemade ceramic Christmas trees, I think you should get rid of them. Sell them while you can. Oh well, what do I know? So I did sell this one for 30 bucks. It's a little one. Um, 12 inches tall? 9 inches tall. And yes, I sell things out of season. I don't necessarily hold on. I know I could probably get more around Christmas time, but I'm in the business to sell it, move it, and move on. This New York City travel book, or souvenir book rather, sold for $9. Uh, a 1930s rolled edge uranium console bowl sold to a subscriber. She knows who she is, and thank you very much. What did that sell for? 24 bucks. This vintage 1940s guide to Florida sold for 10. And this little aluminum set, child's aluminum set, uh, what did that sell for? Eight dollars and yeah, eight dollars and five cents. So you see, not all the sales are in the $200, $300 range. You get some piddlies, which are fine. $26 took this hand-painted uh, lampshade, Hurricane lampshade, Aladdin lamp. This was probably one of the 1960s, 70s uh, manufactured pieces, not one that, that dates all the way back to the Victorian era. Uh, and yes, I did ship it. Okay, let's uh, be back in just a second with more. All right, let's keep it rolling. From 1949 is this very complicated looking mechanical thing. Uh, I guess it's a drafting tool or some such thing. I don't know. It's beyond me because I don't deal with that kind of equipment. But I was happy to sell it and get 28 bucks for it. Next up is a set of six Fire King dessert cups in the ivory color or custard ivory custard cups is what I'm trying to say they sold for nine dollars this little girl sold for 32 bucks and she is a Napco 1958 little trinket thing that sits on a shelf look for your Starbucks mugs folks because look, here's a little tiny one from, that. these are the You Are There mugs, which are pretty popular. That one sold for eight. And this one sold for 10. So I do look, look for mugs and I pick those up when I find them. A vintage porch light from the 1930s sold for $24. I like this one. Kind of a craftsman bungalow style, if you will. I think that got shipped to Georgia. 1950s Lefton Christmas or Easter uh, singers. They sold for 24. A stapler sold for ten dollars. And then the very next day, to a whole different person, another stapler sold for twenty-five dollars. And these staplers had just been sitting in my shop for months. I don't know what it was. Was it Stapler Appreciation Month? And 25 bucks for that stapler? Well, the stapler collectors know what they're looking for, and apparently that's what they're looking for. Art Deco Salt and Pepper Shakers, $14.99. What a horrible picture that is. Anyway, you get the idea. From 
Now oh, let's see the oh the antique uh, dresser tray, made of ceramic, hand painted. Beautiful piece, sold for fifteen dollars and fifty cents. For twenty four dollars, some clock parts. Now notice I, when I listed these, I put on there General Electric, West Minster Chime Art Deco clock face which it is, but I also included the word steampunk. You know what that is? Now I am not, what should I say? I don't believe in tearing things apart that are in good shape or restorable shape. Uh, the, the clock was gone, so I didn't tear apart a clock just to sell the parts. Uh, I found these parts in a box of other clock parts. So the clock was already gone. And so if someone, to, if someone wants to repurpose this and turn it into one of the steampunk projects, yeah, I'm perfectly cool with that. It saves something retro, keeps it out of the landfill. It finds a new home. And so that's the reason why I put steampunk there in the title. And... I don't know whether it went to someone who's going to build a steampunk item or whether it actually went to a clock restore. I, I don't know, but I'm happy it sold and someone was happy with it. For $12, I thought this would bring more. I was a little disappointed, but it's okay. 1945. I mean, well, not really. Who, who really needs a, a moth can? But I thought the devil was kind of cool. No, I take that back. The devil is not cool. <laughs> Uh, the graphic is cool on this jar, but you, you get what I'm trying to say. And so, okay, let's come back here and we're going to bring this video to a close. Um, I've got a lot more things that sold that I haven't shown you, and so, but I don't want this video to go on for 20 minutes longer than it already has. So I'll do another one of these shortly and get caught up. Hope you like seeing the things that sold. Thank you everyone who uh, visits my shop and watches my thrift haul videos. Welcome new subscribers, old subscribers. Uh, it's always great for you to see me and for me to see you. So I will say to you right now, thanks for watching. And this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying so long for now.